Okay. Uh, good evening and good morning for people in different time zones. My name is Zhong Xiang Lu. I'm at Purdue University. I'm very happy to have this opportunity talking to experts from Zilinx as well as the winners of this year's competition. First, I want to congratulate uh, the winners for winning this uh, very special competition. Uh, I'm going to give to Naveen to, to say something and you, uh, uh, our friends in Zilinx so they can uh, tell us more about this competition. Then we'll ask the winners to present their methods. Okay. Hi everyone. Uh, so I'm doing what Ashish, <laughs> I was expecting Ashish to do it, but anyway. So first of all, congrats to all the teams. I think it was a great run for you guys, uh, especially considering that it was a COVID situation and it was not uh, as expected, uh, and even though with the delays and everything, uh, and even based from our end, doing the evaluations and stuff, various things that slowed down during these days. I think uh, you all know it was a great experience and um, it was a good competition. Um, and some really good work from you guys. So um, I'm really excited uh, that this ran well and I hope to do it again and, and hope that you guys continue to innovate with our technology. Um, so yeah, I'm really like, excited to hear how you guys did it. So yeah, let's take it away. So who's going to present first? Is it going to be, how do we do it Dr. Yang, Yang Shang? Is it? Three, two, one, or one, two, three. How do we do it? Any Let's do one, two, three. Okay. So if you are the winning team, the first prize, speak up. Okay. So uh, we may uh, present first. Uh, okay. Let me share my screen. Uh, can you see my screen? Yeah, yes. I can see the screen. Okay, okay, great. Okay, uh, hi everyone, my name is Han Cai. A uh, great pleasure to share our solution for the LPCVC uh, FPGA check solution. Uh, so today's slides consists of two parts. First, I will briefly introduce once for all uh, our major technique used in this competition. Then Zhe Kai will briefly introduce our uh, uh, implementation details for the competition. So uh, once for all is an efficient auto ML technique that aims to accelerate inference on diverse hardware platforms by efficiently building customized neural networks for each hardware and efficiency constraints. So conventional approaches achieve this by repeating the architecture search and model training process for each case. So this is not scalable. For example, assuming using uh, MNAS to auto find specialized models. So it will take around 40K GPU hours to get a specialized model for a single device. When we have four devices, so the total GPU hours will increase by four times. As such, the total design cost will quickly become prohibitive when we cover many devices. So this also leads to critical environmental issues since a large number of GPU hours will directly translate to vast carbon dioxide emissions. So to address this issue, we introduce once for all network to efficiently design efficient models by decoupling training and search. So uh, in this way, we can greatly save the total cost by avoiding the repeated training and uh, search cost. Specifically, in the model training stage, we train a single once for network that supports all of the architecture configurations in the design space. Then in the deployment stage, we can directly grab the subnet uh, work that fits the given hardware without retraining. This process can repeat many times without, uh, with little overhead. Now, the main challenge here is that how can we support so many different subnetworks in a single network and prevent uh, these subnetworks from interfering with each other. So uh, particularly here, we, uh, we cover four different dimensions of neural architectures, including resolution, kernel size, depth, and width. So in total, a single one four network will comprise more than 10 to the power of 19 different subnetworks. It becomes very challenging to optimize this network. So to uh, address, uh, address this challenge, 
So we introduced the progressive shrinking technique. So spe uh, specifically, we cast the training process of once for all as a progressive shrinking and joint fine training process. We start with training the full network, uh, then progressively shrink the model to support smaller subnetworks while jointly fine training both large and small subnetworks to avoid forgetting. So progress thinking, it can be viewed as a generalized uh, network pruning process that has much higher flexibility. We not only support uh, shrink the width dimension, but also the depth, kernel size, and the resolution. So uh, for the resolution dimension, we randomly sample input image size for each fetch throughout the whole training process. Then uh, we, for the kernel size dimension, we start with the full kernel size then support smaller kernels by taking centered weights via a transformation matrix. Uh, then for the depth dimension, we will gradually allow later layers in each unit to be skipped to reduce the depth. Finally, for the width dimension, we keep the most important channels according to the L1 norm uh, when shrinking the width. Uh, this figure shows the results of once for all on ImageNet across many configurations, progress shrinking consistently outperforms without progress shrinking. So therefore we can easily get many trade-off points without sacrificing accuracy based on the once for all network. And uh, regarding the search process, there is no training cost since we can directly grab the weights from the once for all network. And therefore it is highly efficient. And here we can apply any search algorithms here, uh, such as evolution and even uh, random search. So after architecture search, once for all can provide highly competitive performances compared to efficient net and mobile net v3, uh, once for all is 2.6 times and 1.5 times faster respectively. More interestingly, we find Training the searched architecture from scratch cannot reach the same level of accuracy as once for all. So uh, it shows that once for all cannot only improve the efficiency, but also the accuracy. Okay, that's all for the uh, once for all part. Any questions so far? Uh, if no more questions, uh, Zerkai, can you uh, proceed and talking about the implementation details uh, for the competition? Uh, so, uh, can you see my screen? Uh, yeah. Sure. Here comes the second part of our presentation. Uh, I will talk about some details of our implementation of the PGA. Uh, the first thing, uh, before using, uh, before using once for all to search a model, we need to decide the search space. We use MobileNet V2 as our space, as it's proven to be very efficient for once for all. Uh, more efficient networks like MobileNet V3 should not be supported by the DPU. So, one of the main parameter of the search space is the number of channels for each layer. There's an inter interesting observation that the latency of the DPU only changes uh, when the number of the channels cross the uh, cross a multiple of ten, which means the parallelism of the DPU uh, on the input channel and output channel is ten. So therefore, we use uh, multiple of tens as our uh, input channel and output channel size. After deciding the search space, uh, we to we need to uh, we need to uh, we need to uh, the one for all network requires a latency predictor, which uh, which uh, which can predict the network generated by the one for all to search for a better uh, better, better model. So we need a latency predictor. But we cannot afford deploying every every single model from once for all on the uh, on the FPGA board, which could take a lot a, a lot of time. Uh, fortunately, by utilizing the profiling tool by DPU, we could find that DPU actually process the lay, process network layer by layer. So the total to, the total latency of the network is the sum of all latency of each layer. 
Uh, so we build and build a, uh, so instead of evaluating the, the uh, every model from once more, we build a lo lookup table for each layer. Uh, for each possible layer configuration, we build a dummy model, which consists of the layer itself and use the, and use the profiling tool to get the latency. Uh, by using the lookup table, we could quickly predict the latency of each model generated from the once for network. Just add up all of the corresponding latency from the lookup table. So after we get a network from the once for, uh, we could deploy it on the DPU. However, however as DPU use 8-bit quantization, we observe a significant quantization loss for, uh, when we deploy the search models. Uh, this might be called the mobile V2-like networks removes a lot of redundant information. We make them uh, likely to be affected by the quantization itself. Uh, we utilize the fine-tuning tool in VDIS AI to help against this loss. After just one epoch of fine-tuning, we could recover most of the accuracy loss. Uh, we also have some other tips for better performance. The first thing is to help reduce uh, uh, reduce the overhead of pre-processing data. Pre-processing overhead can be significant when the model is very small, like the latency of the model, model is like six to eight milliseconds, but the pre-processing of each image can take like five to six milliseconds, which can reduce the utilization of the DPU. So we use a multi-process, uh, multi-thread processing. Uh, by using by using a multi-thread processing, we can we can make the pre-processing stage and the inference stage overlap. So we can get better utilization uh, for DPU. Some other tips like uh, we also use a lar larger input image because we found that small input image can result in a more significantly accurate loss. And the pre-process needs to be exactly the same as the training process and the inference process uh, because the difference between the like PyTorch pre-process in PIL uh, uh, and, and the uh, CAFE pre-process Mm, or OpenCV, they are slightly different. The size difference can be larger when we when our model is very small. So that's all for today's presentation. Any questions? Hi, is Hong. This is, no? Can you hear me? Uh, uh, this is yeah. So uh, when you the uh, make the lookup table for the latency for each layer, how do you get at these numbers? Uh, sorry, what? Uh, yeah, so for, for this table, the, for example, you have input 12 by 12 by uh, times 8, the uh, input and output, and then you get the uh, latency. How do you get this latency number? Uh, we just build a dummy model, uh, like the weight, a random model, and we use the VTS AI to deploy the model on the FDG board, and we actually evaluate that model on the FDG board. And by running, uh, by utilizing the profiling tool, we can get the exact latency for, for that layer. So you make the dummy model and then uh, only one layer you executed on the FVG? Yes. For each layer, we, can, we just run it on the board. And for another layer, just run. I see. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Hi, it's Hong. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that you use uh, DPU and the white AI, and uh, so this model is trained by. I know that Hans Lab has uh, uh, some excellent uh, uh, technology to training the model very efficiently. So uh, this model is. Uh, trained by the uh, technology, and uh, when you train this model, it 
does any uh, apply any uh, uh, special techniques that can apply to FPGA optimization? Uh, so only uh, use the uh, lookup table to doing some profiling and uh, or do you have yes, some? Yes, that's all we need to deploy the model of the FPJ. Uh, so when you train the model, do you use any uh, special uh, techniques that can be applied for the FPGA implementation? For example, that you mentioned you use the DPU uh, 1600, the configuration is the 8-10-10. Eight, eight, I can't re remember, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because uh, for these configurations, if the channel and the, uh, the input size can be satisfied some limitations, the efficiency will be the best. So to also use some uh, uh, similar technologies to, to do that. Uh, we, we, for one, we train the once for all network itself uh, it's, it's the training process of once for is after we decide the search space. So when we when we decide we use it multiple times as our uh, input channel output channel size, all of the uh, layers in the once for network itself is like tens or like that. Uh, that's all. Uh, we just uh, mm. then we just follow the standard standard training process of once for we can get the network for the FPGA. Once for is is a uh, as the name applies, it can search every model. Uh, uh, it um, uh, it has search a model for each uh, for each uh, for each device. So. Uh, so we don't need to modify the once for network itself to to be suitable for RPG. We just use one for and it can gen okay. generate a good model for. Well, but uh, actually, I have a question about uh, the, your part. For, since, for example, you mentioned the Ultra ninety six, the input channel and output channel, they're supposed to be a multiple of ten, is right? Yeah. So you you just uh, uh, when you uh, optimize, you're probably using this technique, but uh, 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 original ones for let talk that that doesn't have a position for ultra ninety six. So uh, actually, I have a question. How do you implement the nine ultra ninety six? So you have the uh, once for let talk. Uh, 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 sorry. Uh, you mean that uh, we uh, we. Sorry, could you? Uh, I mean, the, so, the, the, my question is that uh, once for that tool you mentioned the, the each different hardware platform, uh, uh, since the after you adjust, uh, uh, after you, you're training the uh, parents, uh, train, uh, teachers network, and then for child network, you, you just uh, some kind of uh, extract the sub network. But uh, in that case, uh, you need some specified uh, uh, special hardware platform, is right? But the Ultra 96 is not including that Unspool network. So you need to somehow some, uh, uh, implement the Ultra 96 uh, to the, the Unspool network. Uh, could you some explain about that? Uh, so specifically for the competition, we uh, we redesigned the uh, architecture space of the Unspool. So we have a new uh, design space all of the channels should be divisible by 10, and we train a new ones for network uh, using the new design space for this competition. And we I search see. based okay. on the trend ones for network uh -huh. and get a new yeah, one. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I, I, I have uh, one question. Uh, oh, just, um, I also try once for all to deploy model to a DPU and uh, 
uh, you know, the ones for is right in PyTorch, and uh, now the DPO only support TensorFlow and Coffee. Uh, when you deploy the model generated from PyTorch, you need a translator PyTorch model to TensorFlow model. Yes, we translate yes. model yes. from PyTorch to Cafe. Yes, the RC is up on GitHub, which can do this. Uh, I also try convert the PyTorch model generated from OneSphere to TensorFlow. However, after the quantization, uh, the accuracy is there. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, you need yeah. to utilize the fine tuning model by VTC to recover the composition loss. Uh, uh, as we know, it's only supported <coughs> by the cafe motion, uh, cafe uh, edition of the VTC. Uh, I know you you translate the PyTorch model to cafe model is just the using the fine tune cafe. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Thank you. So could you explain a little more? So yeah, I, I understand thing. Uh, sometimes uh, when you convert the, the floating model to the quantization model, there's just some um, quantization loss. But uh, uh, we didn't expect uh, this kind of big uh, quantization loss. So uh, when that kind of uh, so how so the how did you quantize? So did you quantize your own quantizer or how did you quantize? We quantize the generated model from the uh, sampled from the once for all. Uh, just just use the VDC AI uh, tool. It's the end to end tool, tool to help quantize and fine tuning our model. I see. So this is provided uh, based. VDC AI is the uh, copy quantizer model. I see. Actually, VDC AI actually provide the TensorFlow quantizer also. TensorFlow quantizer and the uh, copy content and uh, as I know, both of them is the same performance. So as we know, there's no uh, fine tuning mode for the uh, TensorFlow tool chain. So the only thing we can try now is to convert to cafe model and utilize funding mode of the uh, so after you uh, make the subnet so you you fine tuning using the cafe, right? That's the you Yes, we we fine tune our model using the cafe tool. Using cafe. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know that. Because they yeah, yeah, have the fine to do more. <laughs> okay. Um, I have one question. This is Naveen. So um, I have actually kind of a two part question. So well, first part is um, so um, overall, um, good job. How, how was your experience with uh, uh, using Pink? And do you have any plans of sharing this design? Oh, I found an interesting observation is that. The old version of the DPU, like the the one without the uh, pink, the, the original DPU version, the, the latency on the original DPU version seems to be faster than the current version on pink. So, uh, so is it is a is, it, is a latency degradation. Uh, unavoidable or something could be optimized. Uh, what? Can you explain a little bit? So you have the same pink board, but uh, two different uh, what? Uh, XRP? Uh, what do you mean the uh, latency is degraded compared to which board? What do you mean? Uh, there's the old version of the DPU, like before we, before using the pink, there's a, like, there's a DPU IP on the Xilinx website, and there is dedicated the Linux Linux drivers for that. And you found yeah, that it, yeah, it's a uh, indeed the uh, old version because in our uh, latest release we didn't release uh, for the Ultra ninety six. Yeah, the Ultra ninety six. There's no the platform for that, so we didn't have some uh, public public release for that. Yeah, 
if you use the ultra ninety six. But the, you test the, uh, one question. Did you test the ultra ninety six or the pink board? Is the pink board or the ultra ninety six? Yeah, we uh, on the ultra ninety six we use the pink platform to load the uh, load the DPO and the models. Oh, I see. Thanks, Chicken. So, any uh, so another question is that we uh, we found that we didn't uh, the DPO cannot support something like uh, like uh, like uh, uh, some uh, some structures in MobileNet V3. Uh, do you have any plans for that? Uh. What are the detail layer for the mobile net v3? Like um, there's a specialized uh, activation function in mobile net v3. Which, uh, switch? Uh, yeah. Which switch? Yeah. Switch, okay, switch, okay. Switch. Uh, this maybe I will uh, talk with our DPU team because uh, currently, indeed, we only support the operations of the mobile net v2. Yeah, we only support the depth-wise con and the review six. Yeah, but uh, mobile net v3, maybe I need to discuss with our IP team and uh, if we uh, will support that. Yeah, sure. we, will, forward to forward. we will evaluate the resource, resource use. Yeah, because even when we support the mobile net, uh, for the depth wise com we use uh, uh, additional uh, resource for that yeah and you can see our uh, dpu trd yes if we only focus on some network we can uh, close the uh, mobile uh, close the depth wise com to to save the resource Yeah, um, I, I think, uh, yeah, I think Han will know that Dongliang's team is uh, focused on that. Yeah, uh, we are f f familiar with each other. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I saw the FCCM paper very optimi well optimized for mobile v two. Is that released yet, or the FCCM? Oh, uh, sorry, the FPL FPL paper. Uh, I think. I think currently we already support the mobile net v2. Uh, uh, yeah, we, we do support mobile v2, but uh, there are a lot of further optimizations in the FPL paper. Oh, th that details, I, I'm not sure if we're already doing that FPL or something like that. Yeah, I, I should confirm with, uh, with the IP team, yeah. If the detailed, uh, yeah. Uh, what about like five by five and seven by seven, five, seven kernel in the depth wise layer? Is it well supported, or is it supported but not uh, not efficiently supported? Uh, I'm not sure it's efficient or or that. Yeah, I, I'm not sure about the, these details. Yeah. I will take a note about that, and uh, maybe I will reply the email about that. Mm, yeah, that would be good, since that's in the third space. Mm. Well, thank you. Thank you for this wonderful discussion. Um, so now we let's move to the next team, the Max team, please. Uh, oh, can everyone hear my voice? Yes. Okay. It's all yours. Okay. Hey, hi, hello everyone. We are the team Max. We come from National Johnson University. And from the beginning, we will introduce our backbone model and our model strategy for this FPGA contest. Finally, we will talk about our flow on DPU and some difficulties we encounter during our flow. And our model is based on hardnet. In this paper, they thought the most important factor affecting Latency on GPU is not the number of parameters or max, 
it is the amount of zero and excess. Therefore, they studied how to improve the utilization of GPU under the fixed amount of zero and excess. In the figure below here, the horizontal axis is the sum of input channel and output channel, and the, and the vertical axis is the max over the given traffic. And we can see if we fix the kernel size, the three by three, the conclusion with channel ratio one to one will have the higher computational density. And if we fix the channel ratio to one to one, and the kernel size bigger will have the higher computational density. And we thought the GPU and DPU have similar behavior. So we select a model with low DRAM traffic and feature map and high utilization on DPU. Hence, we chose Harnet as our backbone and adjust the model based on this concession. And this page, we will talk about our base backbone Harnet. A significant trade in neural network research is shortcuts to cope with the degradation problem. Residual network and shortcut to sum up a layer with multiple preceding layers. Shortcut makes neural deep without degradation. Then they concatenate all preceding layer in dense block, as the figure here. And dense block and However, overmatch shortcut due to both large memory usage and heavy DRAM traffic. So this paper proposed a new neural network like this one. And it's based on DenseNet and focus on more and focus more on DRAM traffic and enhancing the computation efficiency. Figure below this page shows the hard block, which is fast version of dense block. The connection makes the network appears as an overlapping of power of two harmonic weight. In this network there with an index divided by a large power of two, like this one, have the more input channel. So it seems more influential because they have the more input channel. So, so they set the variable M to amplify the output channel of this there, it can also balance the channel ratio between the input and output, so it can have a more higher computational density. And the score of this contest composed of two parts. The first part is accuracy, which is 40%, and the latency, which is 60%. So we we divide into two strategies. One is higher accuracy with the backbone model Harnex 68. And the other is low latency, but accuracy only needs higher than 68.5 using the backbone model Harnex 39. Um, take Harnex 68 as an example. we beginning from two convolution with kernel size three by three, and then follow five hard blocks and each hard block have a one by one conclusion here. Although at the end we have better results on high precision model, we think that low latency model and um, well are easier to score high in this contest. But we spend too much time studying how to use DPU so we don't have time to test the latency for different models when using GPU. In this page, I will talk about our address for this context. First, under the goal of low, low latency, we simplify Harness 39 to minimize the computation and DRAM traffic without losing too much accuracy. We fine tune K to shrink the hard block size. And we re and we, we do remove the one by one conclusion to achieve a, high, more, a higher computational density. 
And second, we want to put more calculation in the same DRAM traffic. So we, we, and within the bottleneck of FPGA and DRAM is on DRAM access. So utilization of PE won't be very high, especially in conclusion with kernel size one by one. Which data reuse is not high. Therefore, we hope to reduce convolution one by one in model and utilize DPU resource as much as possible. And I talk in the first step. However, some one by one convolution near the fully connect can remove exactly. So we chose we change the kernel size one by one to three by three to have more computation in the same, in the same given traffic. On this page, we are going to talk about model compilation and compilation. Our model is based on PyTorch, but it is AI only support TensorFlow and only. So our workaround is converting the weight trained by PyTorch to TensorFlow model. And the next is about compilation. We use VTIS AI compiler. Since DPU only support 8-bit compilation, there must be some accuracy loss here. We try to add some, add more image to collaboration. And we finally get about 1% accuracy, lo accuracy loss by using 10,000 images during compilation. The next is about compiling the quantized model for DPU. We use VTIS compiler in this step. And there are some problems during the compilation. The first is we got an error message while compiling the model, including convolution there with kernel size seven by seven and output channel is 1000, which should be supported by DPU according to DPU user guide. We also found that fully connect layer gives the wrong output after compile. So we change the fully connect layer in our model to avoid this error. Here shows the final configuration of our implement. In architecture, we have tried two different different architecture, like using 800 with two cores, or using this one with single core. But and the final result is using this with using this one with single core. In other configuration, I think everyone are similar. And there are some issues when we encounter when using DPU with VTIS flow. First, we found out that if we name the EOF file generated by VTIS AI using underscore, it will lead to dead kernel when calling this function. It seems that the function check the ID of the kernel with underscore. Second, when trying different configuration of DPU, we change the clock rate of DPU in project configuration file, but the clock rate is fixed. I think it seems that the update file fixed the clock rate. We think maybe in future context team can modify the clock rate. And here is how we deal with the input image. In the beginning, we try to overlap load and calculation time to improve the timing. But the overhead caused by multi-thread of Python is too heavy to slow the calculation time of DPU with channel, channel concatenation. So we have no choice but to preload numbers of image and then call DPU to calculate the result. The help of multi-thread to low time can be decreased. Then close the thread when DPU calculating the, to pretend the retard caused by the overhead. This is how we deal with the image. And that's my that's, that's our sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so the friends from Zilinx, do you have any questions? Or any other team, do you have any questions?
I have a question. Did you did you train this work from uh, from step one to from the accuracy from there or uh, fine tune this uh, model? Can you, can you speak again? Uh, <clears throat> uh, the accuracy uh, the accuracy reported by the website uh, the accuracy is very high. I I want to know uh, the accuracy on validator set is. Uh, uh, Accuracy on validated data set. Can, can you report the validated data set on uh, accuracy? I yeah, imagine it. Data. Um, in our validation set, we we have eighty seven percent accuracy. Um, but I I don't. I'm not sure if this is. Because we train all my all our data in hand, so we can have the higher accuracy. Uh, oh, I know. Thank you. Anyone else has questions? Hong, do you have a question? I, I. It seems you are already doing many optimization. Uh, on the models to match our DPU. For example, you remove the uh, one by one uh, yeah. kernels and replace by the three by three. Yeah, and uh, thank you. And you have uh, so many uh, research on our D DPU. And uh, I noticed that you mentioned you have uh, many issues. Uh, oh, yes. For example, some. A compiler and uh, also some the uh, uh, how to uh, evoke the kernels. Uh, can you uh, write me an email uh, to talk about these issues? I will check that uh, uh, that the detail about the issues or or some other uh, confusion about that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I I read my email on the chat board. Okay. Yeah. At, uh, we can write for you at the list meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, thank you. I have shown my email here, uh, Hongluo at uh, zilis dot com. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh no, no, no. So, so sorry. I privately replied to. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, yeah, you can see my email. Okay, okay. I, I see your email. Actually, actually, for my opinion, is the uh, uh, two things. One thing is the uh, you said that the, your accuracy of the consideration is a drop a lot, and then you need to calibrate the more than uh, 100,000 images. Uh, how many images did you calibrate? Uh, I only share the question is about quantization efficiency. I mean, the, the, you, you mentioned the, if you, you need to calibrate the 10,000 images to uh, uh, to catch up the, the accuracy. So that's some kind of a weird because uh, I know that, yeah, it is some kind of a generally we understand the after quantization accuracy drop, but uh, uh, for my experience, uh, I actually, I, I quantize uh, maybe Around 100, around 100 models, but uh, after usually using the 100 image quantization, usually the accuracy is uh, uh, some reasonable, for example, less than 1% one accuracy drop. Uh, it is uh, some you, are the, you, you need uh, the 10,000 images to, uh, for cal uh, calibration. Uh, because we we first use about ten or one thousand one thousand image and and the average drop is about two to five percent. So we just try to using more image to and and try to if it will have better accuracy drop. So. 
Do you know there are two quantization modes there? So quantization mode is zero and mode one. Maybe you need to uh, try to the what, which one is the better uh, fitting to your model. Uh, for my experience, uh, I think 100 image is good enough. Uh, I never tried 10,000, but uh, uh, whatever, if uh, after 100 image, if the accuracy drive and then 39 recover, uh, even though I tried many images, uh, it never recover at all. So I, I just uh, uh, curious uh, how can they put And the second part is a uh, seven by seven convolution with uh, 10,000 uh, triple channel. I think this is some kind of uh, uh, FBJ, uh, TPH, FBJ some, uh, cache memory is, uh, issue. And uh, I think this is, uh, we already know this is, this is uh, because that, that's a huge, the, uh, the memory size is huge, so the, I think I approved they cannot handle this part. Uh, yeah, I, I, have, yeah, I have the same issue over this. I mean, I just, uh, I, I, this is not uh, uh, any some question, I just uh, comment about uh, your experience. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, Danny and thanks, Max. Um, I think in the interest of time, maybe we should move on to water now. Thanks, everyone. The water team, can you speak? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I share my... Can you send me? Okay. Uh, my name is Sherman Liang. I'm a student from Institute of Computing Technology, Chinese Academy of Sciences. Um, today, I will share our solutions of LPG Tracker ARP CVC20. Uh, in fact, our solution is very simple. It, it only changes one parameter of efficient light variable. Uh, this solution contains file paths and from DPU architecture to certain model configuration, training, quantization, and deploying. Um, first, the DPU architecture um, to fully explore the hardware resource of Ultra 96 platform, which is the DPU architecture to B2, 3, there, 4, and uh, to provide high performance with the RAM usage to high. And uh, the frequency for general logical is uh, 200 megahertz, and for DSP slices is 400 megahertz. Then for certain model, we select the same model from a uh, uh, light zero uh, family and uh, considering the trade-off between accuracy and uh, latency and uh, the imaging per processing time, we select efficient light zero as the backbone model. However, when we deployed the efficient light zero on DPO, uh, how it, it incurs error. Because the original efficient light variable cannot be deployed on DPO with the Ultra 96 V2 platform. This is because the network light parameters violated the requirement of DPO. And the uh, DPO compiler will increase error that the kernel parameters and the input channel group should uh, less with buffer depths. And to solve this problem, we, and in order to deploy the efficient light variable on TPO with Ultra 96 platform, we change the output channel of block from, um, from 192 and to 162. Then we leverage a VDR GPU to try and modify the efficient light variable model, and the train bit size is 128. After that, we leverage TensorFlow and to train the efficient light variable model and get the best accuracy is 17.499% when training step reaches two minutes. And we frame the uh, modified efficient light variable model and uh, 
evaluate the accuracy of the frozen PB file on ImageNet evaluation data set. The accuracy is uh, 17.64 percent, and the accuracy is higher than the 17.499 percent, and uh, this is because we changed the interpolation methods in image preprocessing from bilinear to cubic, and uh, then we quant the frozen PB file and the using 8 bit accuracy of, uh, of quantized model is the um, 71.28%. Uh, uh, we use the matter 3 that is to deploy the efficient uh, um, light derivative model uh, on DPU, and uh, the thread is set to 4. And this is the code we deployed the efficient net light variable. And the accuracy and the accuracy on image data uh, validation data set is the uh, 71.056%. And uh, on, on the evaluation data set is 69.9%. The best accuracy is uh, 11.31 minutes for details. And, and we release the code on GitHub, and uh, this is our solution. It's very simple and uh, just uh, change one parameter from efficient net to that zero. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Is there any questions from anyone? Hong, do you have any questions? <laughs> Uh, I have no questions for for this. It seems they use DPU very well, and uh, I know that they have achieved some configuration. Yeah, I think both are all okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The frame question is set in in DPU pink project, and uh, it's uh, two hundred megahertz and uh, four hundred megahertz. Tehi, do you have any question? Uh, no. Okay. So now it's an opportunity for, I guess, for the winners to ask Zadings how to improve their product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the participants has uh, also uh, proposed uh, many issues of our solution. Yeah, thank you. But it uh, really thank you that you, uh, even with our support, you already bypassed many issues by your methods and you keep you very well. Thank you so much. Any more things you want settings to improve? Please speak up now. Well, that's nothing to improve. I guess that is products are. Perfect. Okay, so I, I can ask a question actually. So uh, I'm I'm also here with uh, Hugo, and we are also representing the pink team. So we just wanted to ask if you guys have any uh, feedback that you would like us to take back to the pink team as well, not just the DPU, but also for the pink framework. Any suggestions you have, or any feedback that you would like to give? Looks like it's a great platform then. <laughs> Similarly, any feedback for the uh, V2, the Ultra 96 V2 itself? Not just the DPU or pink, but the hardware itself? Okay, let me ask another question maybe also. So uh, if, if we hold the contest again, would you like to work on Ultra 96 V2 or would you like a different board? It looks like it's going good with what we have. It's, it's 
as perfect as can be. Do you have any suggestions about how the competition can be improved? Other than raising the price money, uh, that that's uh, <laughs> that can be hard. Of course, that is what sponsor more prize money. Uh, other than raising the, the the prize money, what else can we improve? Is the submission process smooth for all of you? Any improvement you want to see? So I guess that is represent perfection. They all are pretty happy. Anything else? Anybody want to say anything else? If not, I, I want to say thank you again. Thank you uh, for our sponsor, Zilinx, and they get back, back and support. It's a uh, it's great opportunity working with Zilinx. And of course, I want to thank all the winners. Congratulations again for winning the competition. And I want to thank some of the students They are here. Um, Ani and Xiao, they've been attending the submission website. Uh, I hope it's a good experience. And if you have any questions, or suggestions, you know how to find us. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thank you again. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. 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 Thank you.